Hey guys, how are you all? My name is Ashish Devi, friends, and I welcome you back to my video. So in this video, friends, I will be talking to you regarding the types of ecosystem which we have around us. So their classification will be discussed by me in this video with some appropriate examples. So this is presented by me, Ashish Devi, friends. If you want to follow me, the link of my Instagram profile is given in the description box below. Also, this video is in English, friends. If you want to watch the Hindi version of the video, the link of that is also given below. So very first classification between the ecosystem is friends natural and man-made. So ecosystem can be divided into natural ecosystems and man-made ecosystems. So before looking into the further sub classification of natural ecosystems, let us have a look at the man-made ecosystem friends. So man-made ecosystems are those ecosystems which are made and controlled by human beings. So all the physical features of the man-made ecosystem are being planned by the man and they are being maintained and supervised by the man and for the sustenance of a man-made ecosystem it is very much important that man actively promotes the well you know promotes the maintenance of that particular ecosystem because if the particular man-made ecosystem is not maintained so without human intervention and supervision that man-made ecosystem will disintegrate Okay, also, as this man-made ecosystem is not made by natural processes, so it will be a lot more simpler than the natural ecosystems. Natural ecosystems are a lot more complex. They have they are formed because of the interaction of different forces of the environment, friends. And uh, these forces have evolved over centuries. So that is why natural ecosystems are much more complex. But man-made ecosystems, they are made by man. So they are comparatively very much simpler than the natural ecosystems. Also, if you talk about the examples of man-made ecosystems, so the very first example is the botanical garden friends. Many state governments, many conservation organizations, environmental organizations maintain their botanical gardens. So in these botanical gardens, many species of plants are conserved, they are grown. So that is an example of a man-made ecosystem. Similarly, you can talk about orchards, farming of apples. There also a man-made ecosystem can be seen. Even a small aquarium which is being kept inside your home is a man-made ecosystem because even if four or five fishes are there in it, water is there, regularly you are pouring in food for those fishes to eat. So that also becomes a man-made ecosystem. Okay friends, then canals, park, all of these are man-made ecosystems. Friends. So as they are made by man, their maintenance has to be ascertained and ensured and conserved by man. Then when we talk about natural ecosystems, so natural ecosystems can be further subdivided to aquatic ecosystem and terrestrial ecosystem. Now these aquatic ecosystem friends, they can be further subdivided into freshwater ecosystem and marine ecosystems. Marine ecosystems will automatically contain seawater as they belong to the oceans and freshwater ecosystems will contain some ponds, rivers, lakes where fresh water is there. Then these freshwater ecosystem can be further subdivided into lotic ecosystems and lentic ecosystems. Now I will also tell you the difference between this lotic ecosystem and this lentic ecosystem. Also, the terrestrial ecosystems, terrestrial ecosystems are related to land friends. So these terrestrial ecosystems can be further subdivided into grassland ecosystem, desert ecosystem, forest ecosystem. Okay, so all of these grassland, desert, forest ecosystem, they occur on land. Now moving forward. This is one the figure you can see of natural ecosystems. The division is aquatic terrestrial as I have already told you. So this I have already discussed. Now moving forward to aquatic ecosystem. Now aquatic ecosystem as the name suggests it is water based environment. And here the plants and animals which are residing in this aquatic ecosystem. They interact with the chemical and physical features of the aquatic environment in which they are living. So these aquatic ecosystems are basically of two types. First is the marine ecosystem and second is the freshwater ecosystem. Now marine ecosystem is the largest ecosystem on the planet friends. It covers around 70% of the earth's surface and this we have been taught from very small friends. We all know that 70% around around 70 to 71% of the earth's surface is covered by water. So that is completely marine ecosystem. Okay now in this marine system a lot of things comes for example oceans. Now friends you know that the oceans for example pacific ocean so pacific ocean is a separate ecosystem then we come about arctic ocean arctic ocean is a separate ecosystem atlantic ocean is a separate ecosystem indian ocean is a separate ecosystem similarly southern ocean is a separate ecosystem so all of these are separate ecosystems now in this one ecosystem there are many sub small ecosystems for example 
एस्टुरी एस्टुरी इज अ डिफरेंट इको सिस्टम कोरल रीफ्स आर डिफरेंट इको सिस्टम कोस्टल इको सिस्टम आर डिफरेंट इको सिस्टम वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट दैम इन सम अमाउंट ऑफ टाइम सो दीज आर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ मरीन इको सिस्टम नाउ वेन वी टॉक अबाउट फ्रेश वाटर इको सिस्टम सो फ्रेश वाटर इको सिस्टम आर एक्चुअली फ्रेंड्स दे कवर लेस देन वन परसेंट ऑफ द अर्थ सर्फेस सो यू कैन सी हेयर दैट एक्चुअली दिस मरीन इको सिस्टम आर क्वाइट बिग क्वाइट वाइड स्प्रेड एंड वेन दे आर कंपेयर विद दिस फ्रेश वाटर इको सिस्टम फ्रेश वाटर इको सिस्टम आकुपाई लेस देन वन परसेंट ऑफ द अर्थ सर्फेस नो दिस फ्रेश वाटर इको सिस्टम आर डिवाइड टू लोटिक लैंडिक एंड वेटलैंड वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट दम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट एस्टरीज Now, estuaries are places where rivers are meeting the sea, or you can say where fresh water is meeting the salty water. And this can be defined uh, defined as that this salt water is diluted with the fresh water. Now, such type of conditions are formed at the mouths of rivers, at the coastal bays, at the tidal marshes, and water bodies behind barrier beaches. So basically, at the estuary, the river water. that is the fresh water is combining with the salt water and these are regions which are highly biologically productive and there is a special kind of water circulation there which traps this plant nutrients and stimulates primary production so the biological productivity of these estuaries is quite high because fresh water and salty water is grown so species which can thrive both in fresh water and salty water can thrive in these estuaries then comes the coral reefs coral reefs are also very highly biological uh, productive areas of the world actually they are known as the rainforest of the oceans a huge wide diversity of plants and animals are found in it uh, we are also going to talk about it sometime later then coastal ecosystems so coastal ecosystems are found where this water sea water and land so the adjoining area forms a complete coastal ecosystem a lot of services are there in coastal ecosystem the people live there in the coastal areas they go for fishing so fishing uh, fishing industry parts a form of this coastal ecosystem then a lot of other diverse flora is available flora repre represents plant varieties fauna represents animal varieties so snails fish crabs insects shrimps lobsters all are found in this coastal ecosystem friends also a lot of tourism industry thrives in this coastal ecosystems a huge amount of flow of energy is there it is a very distinct structure friends because here the properties of land and oceans are combined so it forms a very unique structure where a lot of commercial opportunity is produced so this is coastal ecosystem now here this is the figure of an estuary friends here you can see that rivers from many angles are coming it is joining here in the ocean and here you can see that this water is actually a mix of salt water and fresh water which makes it saline and this whole region is an estuary where a whole lot of species diversity is found and this region is very biological productivity pr productive and uh, actually a lot of mangroves are also found in this nearby areas because mangroves are also found where salt water and fresh water meet so it has many medicinal purposes also so the commercial efficiency and commercial usage of estuaries is quite wide then these are the coral reefs you can see it friends so coral reefs are not much below the surface of the ocean they are found up to those depths only until which the sunlight can penetrate the surface of the ocean because sunlight is very much important for you know this coral reefs to thrive and grow also there are some deep sea cold water coral reefs recently you know studies are being involving regarding that but yes, recently what what i am talking about the coral reefs that i am talking about which are found in the great barrier reef even in india when you go to andaman and nicobar islands they, they this these coral reefs are a big tourist spot because they will give you the goggles they will give you the you know safety jacket and then one diver will take you into shallow waters some 15 to 20 feet depth and there he will show you these coral reefs so actually these coral reefs are very beautiful and they are very biologically productive areas so these are the aquatic ecosystem then we come to the fresh water ecosystem fresh water ecosystem consists of lentic ecosystem lotic ecosystem lentic ecosystem and lotic ecosystem difference in the fact that in lentic ecosystem water is not moving it is standing stagnant in lotic ecosystem the water is moving so in lentic ecosystem comes bodies like ponds ditches pools lakes because water is standing there it is not moving and in lotic ecosystem the water is moving for example the river the river is constantly moving a spring is constantly moving a waterfall is constantly moving so the water is moving in these places so basically the spring channel stream run creek brook they form the part of lotic ecosystem and in this lotic ecosystem the water from source to mouth 
It has atmospheric gases, turbidity, longitudinal temperature gradations, which drives the movement. Also, material dissolved in it. Why material dissolved in it? Because the water is moving. So, while moving, it is eroding a lot of rock surfaces and taking with it a lot of sediments. So, that is why it is a lotic ecosystem because the water is moving. Then we talk about the wetland fronts. Here you can see the wetlands. Now, wetlands are a part of freshwater ecosystem. Kindly notice that wetlands and mangroves are different. As I already told you in mangroves, a mix of fresh water and salt water is required. Whereas in wetlands, only fresh water is required. Wetlands are very, very famous for rice production in India. Here you can see these trees and very shallow water here. You can actually walk in this water. They are not very, uh, you know, very deep in some places. In some places they are deep. So these are marshy and swampy type of areas. They have a wide diversity of plants and animals and vegetative population you know a lot of vegetation is done here especially rice cultivation is dominant is then in these wetlands then we talk about forest terrestrial ecosystem you can see the forest here friends so this is the photo of a forest terrestrial ecosystem then moving forward grasslands terrestrial ecosystem so you can see the grasses here so in the grassland terrestrial ecosystem friends you have you have heard about wells downs okay prairies pampas so these are basically the grasslands so all the different type of grasslands which are coming under the tropical grasslands, the temperate grasslands, I will be covering in a separate video friends. So these grasslands are also a part of terrestrial ecosystem and these are very much important when it comes to animal husbandry. Because when animal has, where animal husbandry is practiced, their grasslands are grown intentionally so that animals could get places to feed themselves for grazing. Okay, so these are grasslands. Similarly, the desert terrestrial ecosystem, the whole desert is going on, this forms its own unique ecosystem and then comes the mountain terrestrial ecosystem friends here also the mountains are there and the adjoining areas which are coming in the mountainous areas they all form part of a mountainous ecosystem the living conditions are very different there so these are different examples of ecosystem friends i hope this video was helpful for you if it was helpful kindly subscribe to my channel like my video kindly share this video with more and more of your friends kindly share it on you know you know twitter account facebook account also please share it if you are a member of any whatsapp group related to studies so it will be helpful for me friends if more and more people are going to log this video because that will give me the inspiration to work more and more hard. So thank you for watching this video friends. Have a great day. Goodbye. Keep studying real hard.